Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin for those of you that are new here and if you're not, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here today. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a restorative yoga practice, which for me personally, this hands down is one of my favorite types of yoga to practice. If you've never done a restorative yoga class before, it's incredible comparable to an adult nap time it's super mellow calming for the mind and calming for the nervous system so it brings us into that parasympathetic state where we can truly rest relax and restore hence the name of the practice we hold our postures it's anywhere from five to seven minutes just depending on the nature of the pose and we'll be using a number of props to support our postures. For today's class, I will ask that you have a bolster or any kind of pillow is perfect. At least two blocks. If you don't have yoga blocks specifically, you can also use books and just tower them to appropriate height. You want something that's super sturdy. And then I will also ask that you have two blankets. They don't necessarily have to be yoga blankets per se. Any blankets that you have at home will work. Last of the props that I will cue to in the practice is a strap. And if you don't have specific specifically a yoga strap. You can also use a bath towel. That's super effective as well. One last thing before we get started. If you guys enjoyed today's video, then please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. During this time where I don't have any public classes, I will be uploading videos every day. If you would like to practice with me, then just keep watching. For our opening meditation today, we'll take Supta Bara Konasana. So this is reclined bound angle. We'll start with your pillow or your bolster. You'll take the bolster, place it long ways behind you. If you are using a bolster, go zipper side down. That way that doesn't irritate the back body. Then we'll grab our first blanket. I'd say fold it in half. At least once you want a little bit of thickness. That way your head is above your heart space. And then finally, we have two blocks or books or magazines, whatever it is that you're using. And that is going to support the opening in your hips. The second blanket is optional, but I do like it for over top of the body for a little bit of added weight. For those of you that have a sandbag at home, you're more than welcome to throw that over the hip points, but I know that's not quite as popular as say a second blanket. That will be much easier for you to use at home. Take a seat in front of the bolster, bring the soles of the feet together and let your knees splay wide. You can take the two blocks and bring them to the outer knees or the outer thighs, or whatever setting you need so that the hip opening is comfortable. That second blanket, if you are electing to use it, goes right over the torso or right over the hip points. You'll then make your way all the way down to the back body, adjusting the blanket so that it fully pads and cushions the neck and the head. Bring the backs of the hands to take rest on the floor and feel a natural curl run through your fingers. If anything feels distracting in terms of watches, jewelry, hair ties, or even glasses on your face, just take a few extra seconds and set those things off to the right or left side of your mat. And gradually your movements, they become smaller and smaller, less and less. Ultimately, you let go of the process of moving so that you can begin to receive stillness. Allow your eyes to close. And without blindly reacting, it's a gentle shift in your awareness to the fact that you are breathing. When you breathe in, you feel that you're breathing in. And when you breathe out, you feel that you're breathing out.
There's nothing sharp, there's nothing rushed. As you begin to deepen your inhalation, filling up your abdomen, your rib cage, and your heart. And to balance that, lengthen your exhale, soften your abdomen, your rib cage, and your heart. The breath work in your restorative yoga practice is rather minimal. However, the most important aspect is that you are aware of the breath. Maintaining the awareness of the breath. If it hasn't naturally happened, we plant three seeds of softness in the framework of the physical body. The first seed of softness is planted in the shoulders. Using your exhalation breath to soften your shoulders away from the ears. Notice how that affects your heart, the length of your arms, and the awareness into your hands. The second seed of softness is planted in your jaw. You unclench the lower palate away from the upper palate. Notice how that affects your lips, your tongue, the expression that you hold on your face. And the third and final seed of softness is planted behind your closed eyes. There's a felt change in the mind the brows, the softening through your temples. And you allow this feeling of ease to trickle down into the rest of the body, into ten fingers and ten toes. Still breathing in and out through the nostrils. Layering on Yanana Mudra, draw the index fingers and thumbs to touch. There's a soft extension through the middle ring and pinky fingers. As this will support the focus of the mind, the clarity in your mind. As we take the next few moments to establish intention. Your reason for taking a restorative yoga practice, whether you choose a single word, a short phrase, or dedicating the practice to someone in your life that could use the healing restorative experience. Bring your intention to the forefront of your mind, in the forefront of your open, willing heart. Please repeat your intention silently to yourself three times with full awareness, concentration, and emotion driving behind.
cleanse the exhalation together to share the vibration of our personal intentions and efforts. Take a smooth and slow breath in. Open mouth with patience, let it go. Closure of the mouth, breathe in through the nostrils. And release out through the nostrils. Now if you find that you would like more time and stillness, please stay just as you are for as long or as little as you see fit. If you are ready to move on to our child pose, start with small changes, the smaller the better. Working through ten fingers, pressing the ball mounds against one another and spreading the toes. The feet and hands come to life, palms to the outer thighs, help close off your hips. And then extend your legs out long in front of you, arms long behind you. Interlace your fingers and flip your palms to the back of your space. Let your shoulders shrug and your legs extend. Swim the arms long to frame your sides, bend into the knees, keep your gaze soft. Clearing your space of your blocks as you roll over to fetal pose on your right side. As you settle on your right side body using a blanket or your right arm to support the right side of your face. Soft hands and feet, sending the breath into the back body. gentle reminder in our restorative yoga practice you want to avoid engaging the core the abdominal wall so when we are pressing up from the ground we extend top leg long press your top hand into the floor lifting up the shoulders roll up to the neck and the head is the last thing to lift from our opening meditation we'll make our way into child pose We'll begin with our two blocks. The first block we want at lower height and wide. Our second block we want at second height. And I have about six to eight inches between those two blocks. From there, you're grabbing your bolster or your pillow and you will angle that over top of the two blocks. Please make sure that the bolster is beginning on the ground. That way you are super stable when you recline forward. From there, the big toes are touching and the legs go wider than the bolster. Walk the lower half of your body forward. Feel the two bottom corners of the bolster touching your inner thighs. If you find sensitivity in the ankles, you can take first blanket between the heels and your sitting bones. Not super comfortable while you're upright, but is very helpful when you forward fold. With that second blanket, if you'd like, you cape that around your back body. From there, we take our forward fold. Allow your abdomen, front ribs, and heart to rest comfortably on your bolster. Either side of your face rests on the bolster. Elbows, forearms, and palms take rest on your mat. Now, once you've settled in comfortably to the front body, I will let you know when we are halfway through the hold. That way, you don't have to worry about keeping time. So whichever side of your face you bring down to rest is perfect. Once we are halfway through, I will cue you to lift your head and look to the opposite side of your space. To receive the most benefits from this practice, please avoid the fidgets or the constant readjusting. Of course, if you find that you are running into some discomfort, adjust your props, adjust your body, and then settle back in as you are ready. Once you feel as though your body has acclimated with the shape, let your eyes close. Start to focus on the fact that you're breathing.
gradually allowing the pace of the breath to steady. To become even slower than the pace you started with. allow your transitions to be just as restorative as the postures themselves. Bring a slow lift into your head and allow the opposite side of your face to take rest on the bolster. You check back in with the three seeds of softness, the shoulders, the jaw, the space behind your closed eyes. your time as you breathe in and you breathe out. If you find that you would like more time in your child pose, please sustain for as long or as little as you'd like. If you are ready to move on, bring pressure into your palms, press hands into your mat and start to lift up through the shoulders, the neck, once you have the torso lifted, we can clear the space of our bolster and our two blocks. We'll give the legs a break by opening up the hamstrings. All that we need, one blanket, and you'll place that behind you to pad the neck and the head, and then you'll grab for your yoga strap. We don't have to loop it or anything like that. Just unrolling it is perfect. When you lie all the way down onto the back body, we'll do an assist for the cervical spine. Interlace your fingers behind your head. Wrap the forearms into your temples and lift the chin towards the chest. You can stay still right here or take some movements and sway to the right and to the left. Lower your head down on an exhalation and then returning back to the strap. We'll begin today with our right foot securing your right ball mounds, arch or right heel, then extending your right leg up towards the ceiling. Slide the hands down the strap, so much so the elbows and triceps can stay grounded. If right here is perfect, this is where I'll ask you to stay. If you would like a little more support for the hands, wrap the strap up the hands once, twice, or even a third time, depending on how open you feel in the back line of the legs. From there, deciding to keep your left knee bent or extending your left leg long. I know this pose is a little more active, so we'll gauge two minutes on each side. Once you've settled into the appropriate amount of hamstring length, let the eyes begin to soften. 
and the breath again to become steady. These gentle poses, in the relatively long holds, they become incredibly therapeutic for your being, for your wholeness and your wellness. Take your time as you breathe in. As you breathe out, bend into your right knee, free your right foot. And we'll take the time to observe, allowing both of the legs to elongate, palms rest on the belly. Just notice any change. Is the sensation more concentrated through the length of your right hamstrings? Or is the sensation more widespread through the entire length of your right leg? Let's take a few rounds of breath. And we'll make our way into the second side. Grabbing for your strap. Bring a deep bend into your left knee. Draw it up towards the chest and a little bit wider than your torso. Secure your left foot into the strap and extend your left leg up towards the ceiling. Recall your right knee can stay bent, right foot to your mat, or extending the right leg long, more of this L or split shape, heel to heel. Elbows can stay grounded, or if you'd like a little more support, more anchoring, wrap the strap around the palms of the hands once, twice, or even a third time. Chin melts down below the forehead, and you begin to smooth out the quality of your breathing. Just as much as the physical body is present, keeping the mind in the here and now. You'll notice in the longer holds, the mind has a tendency to wander and drift. And you notice that happening. With a sense of kindness, you bring the mind back to the sensation in the physical body the quality of the breathings and to your personal intention.
feel your body take a full breath in. And a complete breath out. Pay attention as you bring a bend back into your left knee. Set the strap off to the side of your space altogether. And again, simply holding space for observation, allowing the left leg to settle. Hands to rest on the lower abdomen, and the belly to breathe. your low back into your mat, hug your left knee towards your heart, right knee up to meet it, apanasana, full wind relieving pose, do some gentle sways, cradle to the right and to the left, keep the gaze soft and the breath flowing, let's roll all the way over to right side, again fetal pose, take a little pause, Keeping the belly soft and incredibly relaxed, extend your left leg long, press your left hand into the floor, right hand follows. Recalling the progression of the shoulders, the neck and the head is the last thing to lift. So from the back bend that we started with to the forward fold of child pose and then lengthening out the hamstrings, we'll move on to our side body stretching. You'll want to bring your bolster or your pillow back onto your space and you'll place that to the width of your yoga mat. Then one of your blocks, place that out in front. This is going to pad the side of your head. Using one of our blankets to go in between your knees, let's bring the outer left hip, outer left thigh to the long edge of your bolster. Before we start to recline down, so you're set up, take the blanket and find that in between your inner thighs, inner knees. Left palm to the mat, you'll slide it away from you, begin to lower down to the left side of your skull. You'll ultimately let it rest on the block that you have beneath you. Now if you find this to be incredibly uncomfortable, you can always grab your second blanket and pad the block. Then we have two options with the right hand and right arm. The right forearm can rest on the bolster or on the length of your right side body. If I were to choose one of those two, I find it easier to rest right forearm on the bolster. Second option, which will bring more length into your right side body, the right arm draws up and over, Bend into the right elbow and hook your right fingers on the left elbow or left forearm. Relax the right arm as heavy as you can. Let your eyes soften and let your breath become steady. Take a moment to acknowledge the quality of your thoughts and whether or not they're in line with your intention, your reason for participating in the practice today.
let all your breath out with patience. Bring awareness back into the right fingers, right palm. A couple of right wrist rotations in both directions. You'll press your right hand either into your mat or into the bolster. Let your head stay heavy as you slide the left hand, arm, back up. And once you're lifted in the heart, the neck, and the head, we'll switch out. Now we'll bring the outer right hip, upper right thigh to the long edge of your bolster. The legs are staggered, and so you have a little more spaciousness for the back body. Take your blanket, slide that in between the inner thighs. Your right hand presses into your mat, slide the right arm away. And then using your block and maybe a blanket to pad the right side of the skull. Recall the right forearm can stay rested on the bolster or draping the left bicep over the left side of the skull. Hooking left fingers on the right forearm or the right elbow. Once you've settled into the sensation, bring closure into the eyes. And start to notice the breath through the length of your left side and the shortening of the right. A supported C curve of the spine, bringing spaciousness, bringing awareness, bringing restoration. Notice throughout the practice that you become more sensitive to the body. If you can soften even 5 to 10% more from where you currently are, use your exhalation to support the change. Kindness, you notice the shoulders, the jaw, and the eyes. You soften whatever it is that you don't need to be here and breathe here.
take your time as you deepen your inhale. Lengthen your exhale. Bring the awareness back into your left fingers, left palm. As the left arm begins to lift, then lower, rotate your left wrist in both directions. Press your left hand into bolster or into mat. Extend your left leg long and slowly rise. The shoulders, the neck, and the head. To counter the side body work, we'll take a brief seat, supported Sukhasana, your easy seated pose. In Sukhasana, super important that your hips are above your knees, your knees are below your hips. To ensure that it's as much or as little height as you need to make that happen. Using your skill of body awareness, your ears are above shoulders, shoulders are above the hips. So you want to minimize any sway forward or splay back, stacking the spine. Shoulders draw back and as you breathe in, urge Vahastasana, upward hands. As you breathe out, twisting to the right. Left hand rests on your right thigh. Your right fingertips catch your bolster. Rest on your low back or release down to the floor. With your inhalation, lifting your heart. and your exhalation, rolling the right shoulder back. Option to send the gaze beyond the right shoulder. Not here super long, just holding for three. Maintenance of the breath. Two, and one. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, gaze follows fingers. Exhale, hands lower, back down to the legs. And just switching out the cross of the legs. Opposite cross for Sukhasana, easy seat. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, upward hands. Exhale, we twist to the left. Right hand finds your left thigh. Your left hand can release to the low back, to the bolster, or all the way down to your mat. With your inhale, lifting your heart, your neck, and your head. With your exhale, option to look over the left shoulder. Again, hanging with me and breathing for three. Soften the shoulders, two. And one more full round of breath. We counter the twist with length. Inhale, Urdhva Hastasana, big sweep high. Hold your intention with the exhale, draw thumbs to the heart. And as you release the hands, we'll set up for our final pose before Shavasana, an abdominal compression. So for this one, props wise, super easy. We're just going to be using a single blanket. You'll place the blanket out in front of you and fold it in a way that it creates a rectangle shape that's smooth. When you run the hands along it, there are no lumps or bumps as this will be right over the waist. Now just so we're clear, it is not on your thighs and it is not on your chest. So be really picky with the placement. For me, I bring it to about middle mat from a tabletop flooring all the way down to the belly. Then you'll sway right and left and you'll feel the compression along the abdominal wall. Now the catch with this posture is if you do have to use the washroom, this is only going to intensify that. So press pause on the video, go use the washroom and then come back as you are ready. Tops of the feet are down, big toes to touch and your heels splay to the sides of your space. Either forehead down or bring either temple down to rest. You decide what feels better on your neck. Let your shoulder soften. And as this is incredibly beneficial for digestion and elimination, it's also such a great teacher for belly breathing. So throughout the hold, focus on the belly, breathing in and softening as you're breathing out.
So once again, take your time as you breathe in deeply. Complete the exhale. Slowly lift through your head. Slide your hands into your shoulders and rise to table. Walk the knees forward. Once your shoulders are above the wrists, hips above your knees, inhale, cow pose, send your heart forward. With your exhale, cat pose, high through your spine. Let's go two more like that, breathing in, front body opens. And breathing out, back body opens. Last time, in breath. And out breath. Now last, but certainly not least, we set up for our final Shavasana, our final rest. And to do that today, we'll set us up a little bit differently. We'll have a slight elevation on the legs. This will bring a more neutralizing effect into the spine. Starting with our two blocks at second height, you're going to then take one of your blankets and you'll put the two blocks at second height out in front of you at the small edge of your mat. And taking one of your blankets, Fold that up and place it just between your two blocks. Then I'll have bolster, leaning that on an angle up against your two blocks. A second blanket behind you to pad your neck and your head. Scooting your hips right up against the bolster and then drape the knees over top of the bolster. So long edge is at the knees, hamstrings are fully against the bolster. And once you lie down onto your back, you'll notice that your sitting bones pulled away from the bolster. So you want to scoot everything down, then re-extend your legs. You want the blanket padding your heels. And if you'd like a little more cradling effect for the neck and head, you can roll your blanket underneath and in towards the center so you have more of this head hug sensation and you feel really stable. Now traditionally in Shavasana the backs of the hands take rest on the floor. Natural curl through fingers. Now for the sake of this video I will hold us in Shavasana for a matter of five minutes but if you would rather hold a little bit longer or a little bit shorter feel free to pause the video now grab your phone and then set a timer for final rest for the appropriate amount of time for you. Now much like we've practiced letting go of any lingering tension in the arms and the legs and the fingers the toes to support the settling of your energy, as well as the energy in your personal space, we cleanse the exhalation together as a community. Take your time as you breathe in. Open mouth, breathe out. Nowhere else to go. With that, may you enjoy your time and final rest. May you enjoy your time and chosen ease.
precious state of rest. You make the conscious decision to take your time as you deliver change through your ten toes, through your right foot and your left foot pedal up. Deliver change through your ten fingers. Then then curl into a soft fist and extend out like a big high five. Lick your lips and swallow. Let's bring everything together as we take a full body stretch, arms and legs long. And press your low back into your mat, hug your knees into your heart. Our final fetal pose, we roll to the left. Take three rounds of breath. And upon completing your third exhalation, joining me upright in a comfortable seat. Sitting tall, feel your ears above your shoulders, shoulders above your hips. Start to rub the hands together and cultivate a little bit of heat. Once you feel the temperature change in the palms, bring the palms to rest on the eyes as if the heat were recharging the body, the mind, and the breath. And keep the gaze soft, Anjali Mudra with palms, thumbs, rest on the breastbone. And at this time, we acknowledge what is perhaps the most ancient intention of our practice, which is rooted in the teachings of metta, of loving kindness. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be safe. May all beings know peace and walk through this life with ease. And my hope for you is that your practice is continuous, your heart steady, and your mind calm. We cleanse the exhalation one last time to share the vibration of our efforts and intentions all the way down to your belly as you breathe in. Open mouth, let it go. With so much love and gratitude to each and every one of you, we close our restorative yoga practice with a collective bow. Namaste. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. It was truly my pleasure to guide you through this restorative yoga practice, and I hope that you feel a little more calm, a little more grounded and centered within your own body and within your own mind. Again, thank you guys so much for being here today. I hope that you enjoyed the restorative yoga practice, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye. Oh my God. Hey, Kevin. Can I come down? Yeah, yeah. Hey, Kevin, can you turn it down just like a little? Lacey! Lacey! Lacey, please. Hey, Kevin! Hey, Kevin! More cameras, more fun. Yep. Love you. Love you too. Hey, Jude. Kevin? Ugh. Lacey? Lacey early. What are your marks? Lacey still is not scared. I mean, I'm gonna do a good job. Hey, Kevin! How's it going? I'm in my room. <laughs> Don't get me started again. I'm finally calm. Yep, you are end up. Back to your dressing room. Your dressing room. <laughs> well, what a good starting point that was. I'm ready for my close up. I think that's it. Oh, that's fabulous. Yep, that's the ticket. Three minutes in. Lock up, lock in. <laughs> Action! <laughs> Ma'am, to your green room. Come up. It's really hard to 
feel calm because I'm in a giggly mood now. Okay, okay, okay. Ah! 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 Did you yell? Yeah, I'm just trying to get it out. Oh, get it out! Ah!